Here's a quick guide to building the Drop OLKB Plank Keyboard. I would start by checking if all the parts are there. Besides the keyboard kit, you need to get key switches as none are included. You'll need MX switches as they require no soldering and you can either use plate or PCB mounted switches as the Plank PCBA has the holes for both. You also need a small head Phillips screwdriver. A keycap and switch remover is recommended but not needed. Let's check the kit. Inside, you'll find printed instructions and your keyboard case and circuit board. Below, you'll find your USB-C cable, a cute keycaps, a bag containing a socket wrench, six screws, six brass spacers, and six nuts. There's another bag with two stabilizers and four rubber feet. At the very bottom, there's a stainless steel top plate. If you have everything, let's start building. First, you have to choose between three keyboard layouts. I'll build the most commonly used version with a single, two-unit spacebar. Each layout changes functionality and how the stabilizer will be positioned. For the common version, the stabilizer goes into these slots. Take the time to identify the right location and be on the side of the board without raised components. Position the stabilizer with the bar side up, then place the top hooks into the hole. Next, pull the board up. Align the bottom hooks and press firmly to push it through these slots. This is what the stabilizer should look like when correctly installed. Let's attach the board to the case. Pick it up and turn it so the USB port is on the left. Then, gently lower and angle the port into the cutout before lowering the rest of the circuit board. We'll use the included screws to secure the board through these six holes, taking care to avoid the reset hole. You can lift and angle the case with one hand, and with the other, thread the screw into the circuit board. Start on the far left screw, then do the opposite and lightly tighten with your fingers. You can then flip the keyboard over. Thread the remaining screws in position before tightening all six in place. Avoid over tightening as you may crack the board. Now, grab the top plate with the spacebar cut out towards you. We'll add switches to the four corners. This will help align the circuit board and prevent damage. Before placing each switch, you want to check the underside and see if the pins are straight. If they are bent, you can use your fingers to straighten them, but it's best to use another one instead. For the corners, the pins will be at the bottom. To insert, center the switch over the plate and press firmly until seated. For the loose plate build, place it over the board, lining up the holes with the screws. Then. Evenly press down in opposing corners to seat the switches. The loose plate build adds bounce and makes it easy to change mods and cases. The extra secure build feels sturdier but makes disassembly tricky. Before adding the plate, thread six brass spacers to each of the screws. Then use the socket wrench to tighten. Avoid cranking hard, otherwise the board can crack. Next, add the top plate, pressing on opposing corners to seat the switches. Thread the six stainless steel nuts by hand and use the socket wrench again to tighten. Done. Now we can add the remaining switches. For most switches on the board, the pin should be on the bottom side of the keyboard so they line up with the hot swap sockets. To insert, center the switch over the plate. You want to make sure all sides are level so the pins can easily slide down into the socket. Using two fingers, push straight down with even pressure to seat the switch. Repeat this process across most of the board, checking the pins are straight each time. The only exception are these two switches in the cutout at the bottom. Place these switches upside down as the sockets are backwards. For other layouts, the orientation will change. Now, let's plug in the keyboard and check if all the switches are working. I'm using KeyboardTester.com as it gives an audible beep if a key is pressed. If a switch is not working, press down firmly to make sure it's fully seated. Otherwise, remove and check the switch, use a new one if needed. It's time to add keycaps. Follow this photo for the default layout. To insert a key, line up the center and press down evenly. The final step is to add the rubber feet. Peel and apply them to the four corners of your keyboard. Congrats, you've built the plank. Enjoy using your new keyboard.